The scattered disk or scattered disk is a distant circumstellar disk in the solar system that is sparsely populated by icy small solar system bodies, which are a subset of the broader family of trans-Neptunian objects. The scattered disk objects SDOs have orbital eccentricities ranging as high as 0.8, inclinations as high as 40 degrees, and perihelia greater than 30 astronomical units, 4.5 times 109 kilometers, 2.8 times 109 miles. These extreme orbits are thought to be the result of gravitational scattering by the gas giants, and the objects continue to be subject to perturbation by the planet Neptune. Although the closest scattered disk objects approach the Sun at about 30 to 35 astronomical units, their orbits can extend well beyond 100 astronomical units. This makes scattered objects among the coldest and most distant objects in the solar system. The innermost portion of the scattered disk overlaps with a torus-shaped region of orbiting objects traditionally called the Kuiper Belt, but its outer limits reach much farther away from the Sun and farther above and below the ecliptic than the Kuiper Belt proper. Because of its unstable nature, astronomers now consider the scattered disk to be the place of origin for most periodic comets in the solar system, with the centaurs, a population of icy bodies between Jupiter and Neptune, being the intermediate stage in an object's migration from the disk to the inner solar system. Eventually, perturbations from the giant planets send such objects towards the Sun, transforming them into periodic comets. Many objects of the proposed Oort cloud are also thought to have originated in the scattered disk. Detached objects are not sharply distinct from scattered disk objects, and some such as Sedna have sometimes been considered to be included in this group. <laughs> Discovery Traditionally, devices like a blink comparator were used in astronomy to detect objects in the solar system, because these objects would move between two exposures. This involved time-consuming steps like exposing and developing photographic plates or films, and people then using a blink comparator to manually detect prospective objects. During the 1980s, the use of CCD-based cameras in telescopes made it possible to directly produce electronic images that could then be readily digitized and transferred to digital images. Because the CCD captured more light than film about 90% versus 10% of incoming light and the blinking could now be done at an adjustable computer screen, the surveys allowed for higher throughput. A flood of new discoveries was the result. Over a thousand trans Neptunian objects were detected between 1992 and 2006. The first scattered disk object SDO to be recognized as such was 1996 TL66, originally identified in 1996 by astronomers based at Mauna Kea in Hawaii. Three more were identified by the same survey in 1999-1999 CV-118, 1999-CY-118, and 1999-CF-119. The first object presently classified as an SDO to be discovered was 1995 TL8, found in 1995 by Spacewatch. As of 2011, over 200 SDOs have been identified, including 2007 UK 126, discovered by Schwamm, Brown, and Rabinowitz, 2002 TC 302, Neat, Aris, Brown, Trujillo, and Rabinowitz, Sedna, Brown, Trujillo, and Rabinowitz, and 2004 VN 112, Deep Ecliptic Survey. Although the numbers of objects in the Kuiper belt and the scattered disk are hypothesized to be roughly equal, observational bias due to their greater distance means that far fewer SDOs have been observed to date. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Subdivisions of trans-Neptunian space. Known trans-Neptunian objects are often divided into two subpopulations, the Kuiper belt and the scattered disk. A third reservoir of trans-Neptunian objects, the Oort cloud, has been hypothesized, although no confirmed direct observations of the Oort cloud have been made. Some researchers further suggest a transitional space between the scattered disk and the inner Oort cloud, populated with detached objects. <laughs> <laughs> scattered disk versus Kuiper belt The Kuiper belt is a relatively thick torus or Donut of space, extending from about 30 to 50 astronomical units comprising two main populations of Kuiper Belt objects KBOs, the classical Kuiper Belt objects or Cubuenos, 
which lie in orbits untouched by Neptune, and the resonant Kuiper belt objects, those which Neptune has locked into a precise orbital ratio such as 2 to 3 the object goes around twice for every three Neptune orbits and 1 to 2 the object goes around once for every two Neptune orbits. These ratios, called orbital resonances, allow KBOs to persist in regions which Neptune's gravitational influence would otherwise have cleared out over the age of the solar system, since the objects are never close enough to Neptune to be scattered by its gravity. Those in 2-3 resonances are known as Platinos, because Pluto is the largest member of their group, whereas those in 1-2 resonances are known as Twitinos. In contrast to the Kuiper belt, the scattered disk population can be disturbed by Neptune. Scattered disk objects come within gravitational range of Neptune at their closest approaches approximately 30 astronomical units but their farthest distances reach many times that. Ongoing research suggests that the centaurs, a class of icy planetoids that orbit between Jupiter and Neptune, may simply be SDOs thrown into the inner reaches of the solar system by Neptune, making them cis-Neptunian rather than trans-Neptunian scattered objects. Some objects, like 29981-1999TD10, blur the distinction and the Minor Planet Center MPC, which officially catalogues all trans-Neptunian objects, now lists centaurs and SDOs together. The MPC, however, makes a clear distinction between the Kuiper Belt and the scattered disk, separating those objects in stable orbits the Kuiper Belt from those in scattered orbits the scattered disk and the centaurs. However, the difference between the Kuiper belt and the scattered disk is not clear-cut, and many astronomers see the scattered disk not as a separate population but as an outward region of the Kuiper belt. Another term used is, "...scattered Kuiper belt object," or SKBO for bodies of the scattered disk. Morbidelli and Brown propose that the difference between objects in the Kuiper belt and scattered disk objects is that the latter bodies are transported in semi-major axis by close and distant encounters with Neptune." But the former experienced no such close encounters. This delineation is inadequate as they note, over the age of the solar system, since bodies "...trapped in resonances," could "...pass from a scattering phase to a non-scattering phase and vice versa numerous times." That is, trans-Neptunian objects could travel back and forth between the Kuiper belt and the scattered disk over time. Therefore, they chose instead to define the regions, rather than the objects, defining the scattered disk as the region of orbital space that can be visited by bodies that have encountered Neptune within the radius of a hill sphere, and the Kuiper belt as its complement in the a greater than 30 astronomical units region. The region of the solar system populated by objects with semi-major axes greater than 30 astronomical units. Topic. Detached objects The Minor Planet Center classifies the trans-Neptunian object 90377 Sedna as a scattered disk object. Its discoverer Michael E. Brown has suggested instead that it should be considered an inner Oort cloud object rather than a member of the scattered disk, because, with a perihelion distance of 76 astronomical units, it is too remote to be affected by the gravitational attraction of the outer planets. Under this definition, an object with a perihelion greater than 40 astronomical units could be classified as outside the scattered disk. Sedna is not the only such object. 148209, 2000 County Route 105, discovered before Sedna, and 2004 VN 112 have a perihelion too far away from Neptune to be influenced by it. This led to a discussion among astronomers about a new minor planet set called the Extended Scattered Disk (ESDO). 2000 County Route 105 may also be an inner Oort cloud object or, more likely, a transitional object between the scattered disk and the inner Oort cloud. More recently, these objects have been referred to as detached or distant detached objects DDO. There are no clear boundaries between the scattered and detached regions. Gomes et al. define SDOs as having highly eccentric orbits, perihelia beyond Neptune, and semi-major axes beyond the 1-2 resonance." By this definition, all distant detached objects are SDOs. 
Since detached objects orbits cannot be produced by Neptune's scattering, alternative scattering mechanisms have been put forward, including a passing star or a distant, planet-sized object. A scheme introduced by a 2005 report from the Deep Ecliptic Survey by J. L. Elliott et al. distinguishes between two categories, scattered near i.e. typical SDOs and scattered extended i.e. detached objects. Scattered near objects are those whose orbits are non-resonant, non-planetary orbit crossing and have a Tisserand parameter relative to Neptune less than 3. Scattered extended objects have a Tisserand parameter relative to Neptune greater than 3 and have a time averaged eccentricity greater than 0.2. An alternative classification, introduced by B. J. Gladman, B. G. Marsden and C. Van Leerhoven in 2007, uses 10 million year orbit integration instead of the Tisserand parameter. An object qualifies as an SDO if its orbit is not resonant, has a semi-major axis no greater than 2,000 astronomical units, and, during the integration, its semi-major axis shows an excursion of 1.5 astronomical units or more. Gladman et al. suggest the term scattering disk object to emphasize this present mobility. If the object is not an SDO as per the above definition, but the eccentricity of its orbit is greater than 0.240, it is classified as a detached TNO. Objects with smaller eccentricity are considered classical. In this scheme, the disk extends from the orbit of Neptune to 2000 astronomical units, the region referred to as the inner Oort cloud. Topic: <laughs> Orbits. The scattered disk is a very dynamic environment. Because they are still capable of being perturbed by Neptune, Sado's orbits are always in danger of disruption, either of being sent outward to the Oort cloud or inward into the Centaur population and ultimately the Jupiter family of comets. For this reason Gladman et al. prefer to refer to the region as the scattering disk, rather than scattered. Unlike Kuiper Belt objects KBOs, the orbits of scattered disk objects can be inclined as much as 40 degrees from the ecliptic. SDOs are typically characterized by orbits with medium and high eccentricities with a semi-major axis greater than 50 astronomical units, but their perihelia bring them within influence of Neptune. Having a perihelion of roughly 30 astronomical units is one of the defining characteristics of scattered objects, as it allows Neptune to exert its gravitational influence. The classical objects cubuenos are very different from the scattered objects. More than 30% of all cubuenos are on low inclination, near circular orbits whose eccentricities peak at 0.25. Classical objects possess eccentricities ranging from 0.2 to 0.8. Though the inclinations of scattered objects are similar to the more extreme KBOs, very few scattered objects have orbits as close to the ecliptic as much of the KBO population. Although motions in the scattered disk are random, they do tend to follow similar directions, which means that SDOs can become trapped in temporary resonances with Neptune. Examples of possible resonant orbits within the scattered disk include 1 to 3, 2 to 7, 3 11, 5 22, and 4 to 79. Topic. Formation The scattered disk is still poorly understood. No model of the formation of the Kuiper belt and the scattered disk has yet been proposed that explains all their observed properties. According to contemporary models, the scattered disk formed when Kuiper belt objects KBOs were scattered into eccentric and inclined orbits by gravitational interaction with Neptune and the other outer planets. The amount of time for this process to occur remains uncertain. One hypothesis estimates a period equal to the entire age of the solar system, a second posits that the scattering took place relatively quickly. During Neptune's early migration epoch, models for a continuous formation throughout the age of the solar system illustrate that at weak resonances within the Kuiper belt, such as 5 to 7 or 8 to 1, or at the boundaries of stronger resonances, objects can develop weak orbital instabilities over millions of years. The 4 to 7 resonance in particular has large instability. KBOs can also be shifted into unstable orbits by close passage of massive objects, or through collisions. Over time, the scattered disk would gradually form from these isolated events. Computer simulations have also suggested a more rapid and earlier formation for the scattered disk. Modern theories indicate that neither Uranus nor Neptune could have formed in situ beyond Saturn, as too little primordial matter existed at that range to produce objects of such high mass. 
Instead, these planets, and Saturn, may have formed closer to Jupiter, but were flung outwards during the early evolution of the Solar System, perhaps through exchanges of angular momentum with scattered objects. Once the orbits of Jupiter and Saturn shifted to a 2 to 1 resonance two Jupiter orbits for each orbit of Saturn, their combined gravitational pull disrupted the orbits of Uranus and Neptune, sending Neptune into the temporary chaos of the proto-Kuiper belt. As Neptune traveled outward, it scattered many trans-Neptunian objects into higher and more eccentric orbits. This model states that 90% or more of the objects in the scattered disk may have been promoted into these eccentric orbits by Neptune's resonances during the migration epoch. Therefore, the scattered disk might not be so scattered. Topic: <laughs> Composition Scattered objects, like other trans-Neptunian objects, have low densities and are composed largely of frozen volatiles such as water and methane. Spectral analysis of selected Kuiper belt and scattered objects has revealed signatures of similar compounds. Both Pluto and Eris, for instance, show signatures for methane. Astronomers originally supposed that the entire trans-Neptunian population would show a similar red surface color, as they were thought to have originated in the same region and subjected to the same physical processes. Specifically, SDOs were expected to have large amounts of surface methane, chemically altered into complex organic molecules by energy from the sun. This would absorb blue light, creating a reddish hue. Most classical objects display this color, but scattered objects do not, instead, they present a white or grayish appearance. One explanation is the exposure of wider subsurface layers by impacts, another is that the scattered object's greater distance from the Sun creates a composition gradient, analogous to the composition gradient of the terrestrial and gas giant planets. Michael E. Brown, discoverer of the scattered object Eris, suggests that its paler color could be because, at its current distance from the Sun, its atmosphere of methane is frozen over its entire surface, creating an inches thick layer of bright white ice. Pluto, conversely, being closer to the Sun, would be warm enough that methane would freeze only onto cooler, high albedo regions, leaving low albedo tholin covered regions bare of ice. Comets <laughs> The Kuiper belt was initially thought to be the source of the solar system's ecliptic comets. However, studies of the region since 1992 have shown that the orbits within the Kuiper belt are relatively stable, and that ecliptic comets originate from the scattered disk, where orbits are generally less stable. Comets can loosely be divided into two categories, short period and long period, the latter being thought to originate in the Oort cloud. The two major categories of short-period comets are Jupiter family comets JFCs and Halley-type comets. Halley-type comets, which are named after their prototype, Halley's Comet, are thought to have originated in the Oort cloud but to have been drawn into the inner solar system by the gravity of the giant planets, whereas the JFCs are thought to have originated in the scattered disk. The centaurs are thought to be a dynamically intermediate stage between the scattered disk and the Jupiter family. There are many differences between SDOs and JFCs, even though many of the Jupiter family comets may have originated in the scattered disk. Although the centaurs share a reddish or neutral coloration with many SDOs, their nuclei are bluer, indicating a fundamental chemical or physical difference. One hypothesis is that comet nuclei are resurfaced as they approach the Sun by subsurface materials which subsequently bury the older material. See also List of possible dwarf planets List of trans-Neptunian objects Notes References <laughs>